Hello, this is Physics 102A, the solutions for Chapter 11 homework problems. We'll start with number 15. Number 15 says a water wave has frequency of 0 0.40 hertz and wavelength of 2 meters. Its speed is what? So there's the frequency, there's the wavelength, and we're going to use the equation that speed for a wave is frequency times wavelength, 0 0.40 hertz. And remember that hertz, the units on that are cycles per second times 2 meters. So that'll give us the units of meters per second. We get 0 0.80 meters per second. Number 17, a water wave is frequency 0.5 hertz, amplitude 0.35 meters, and wavelength 2.6 meters. If the amplitude doubles, the wavelength becomes, and it's going to stay the same at 2.6 meters because wavelength is independent of amplitude. Number 23, this is a Doppler effect problem. A train approaches at 20 meters per second. It's whistle sounding at 1.13 kilohertz note. You perceive the whistle's frequency as what? So we have to assess as we approach this problem that it is a source of sound that's approaching. So here I wrote moving source approaching, and that's going to determine what formula we're going to use. I've written down the speed of the source, that's V sub S, 20 meters per second. We're going to need the speed of sound. We're going to take that as 343 meters per second. The frequency and F prime is what we want to solve for. The appropriate formula for a moving source is F prime equals F over one minus or plus VS over V. And for an approaching source, that's gonna be, we're, we're thinking about whether it's the plus or minus sign, it's gonna be the one that makes the frequency go higher. So in the denominator, that would be a minus sign. And we have 1.13 kilohertz, and the denominator is 0.9417. So we end up with an answer of 1.20 kilohertz. And then we're going to check, we're going to assess, uh, is the perceived frequency actually higher than the original frequency? And yes, it is. That's what we expect if the source is approaching us. Number 25, an organ pipe with one end closed has fundamental frequency of 220 hertz. The frequency of its first overtone is what? We're dealing with a closed pipe, fundamental frequency 220 hertz. Here I've drawn pictures of the fundamental frequency and then the first overtone. And remember that for a closed pipe, there must be, for a standing wave, a node on the closed end and an anti-node on the open end. And my picture down below is going to be the next possible overtone. If you look at the picture, the wavelength is four-thirds of the length of the tube. You can see I've continued the wavelength there. So uh, there's that four to three ratio. And then the frequency is going to be speed over the wavelength, which is 3V over 4L. And we can see that that is three times the fundamental frequency. So that means that uh, it's three times the fundamental frequency, and that's why I've been calling it F sub 3. So 3 times 220 hertz is 660 hertz. Number 35, we have the formula for the wave on a string, and it is the square root of the tension force divided by mu, which is the, the linear density. It says verify that the SI units are, in fact, meters per second. And so this is just a question of dimensional analysis. And we're going to think that uh, tension is newtons because it's a force. Divide by mu is mass per length. That's kilograms per meter. In the numerator, I've turned newtons into kilograms meters per second squared. Divide by kilograms per meter. And here in the next part, instead of dividing by kilograms per meter, I'm multiplying by meters per kilogram. You can see the kilograms go away, and we're left with meters squared per second squared, square rooted, and that becomes meters per second. Question number 36, the main cable supporting 
this bridge have linear mass density of 4,100 kilograms per meter and are under tension of 250 mega newtons. At what speed does a transverse wave travel on these cables? So we're going to use the formula that we analyzed up in problem number 35. Speed is tension over mu, and tension is 250 times 10 to the 6 newtons. We're going to divide by mu, the linear mass density, 4,100 kilograms per meter, and we end up with 247 meters per second. Number 47, a submarine 65 meters deep emits a sonar wave. The wave reflects from the bottom and returns to the submarine 0.86 seconds after it was emitted. How deep is the ocean at that point? It's very helpful to draw a picture here. We've got the sound wave that goes down and then comes back up. And I've drawn X as the distance between the submarine and the ground below. Now the distance that the wave travels, I'm gonna call that D. So D equals speed times T. And the distance that it travels, the back and forth complete lap, that's two times X. And let's solve for X. So we have X equals one half VT. We're gonna take the speed of sound in water, 1480 meters per second times the time. And we get that X is one half of 1278.8 meters. So that X in the picture is 636.4 meters. The question is asking, how deep is the ocean at that point? So then we have to go back and remember that the submarine is 65 meters under the surface. So we've got 65 meters from the surface to the submarine, then another 636 from the submarine to the ground. So we'll say 701 meters. Number 49 deals with the changing speed of sound through air at different temperatures. A sound wave takes 35 seconds to travel between two points in 20 degrees Celsius air. What is the distance between the points and what would be the travel time at zero degrees Celsius? Here I've got the speed of sound, 20 degrees Celsius is 343 meters per second. At zero degrees Celsius, it's 331 meters per second. That's found in the chapter. There I've drawn a picture from point A to point B, it takes 35 seconds. Distance equals speed times time, so 343 meters per second times 35 seconds, and we get 12,005 meters. Then we're gonna take that distance and figure out what would the time be at a different speed. So 12,005 meters divided by the slower speed of 331 meters per second, and it would take 36.3 seconds. Number 50, a question about intensity level for sound. It says at 25 meters from a sound source, the intensity level is 55 decibels. What is the level at distances of 50 meters and at 250 meters. Before we do any math, right away we can see we expect the intensity level to be lower than 55 decibels because we're looking at it at a farther distance than the original distance. So I'm gonna assess the answers that I get and just see has the intensity level gone down. It's not asking about intensity, it's asking about intensity level. Intensity would be watts per meter squared and just uh, to avoid any confusion on this terminology, intensity level, you can see that it's giving the units in decibels. So it's clear we're talking about the sound level in decibels. At distance one, 25 meters, we have beta one, 55 decibels. Then distance two and distance three, and we wanna find beta two and beta three. Question A, once again, asks what is the level at the distance of 50 meters. Let's see how much the sound level changes as we go from 25 meters to 50 meters. Let's find that difference in sound level. So delta beta is beta two minus beta one, which is 10 times the log of I2 over I1. Now we don't know what I2 and I1 directly are, but we can substitute. That's gonna be power divide by four pi d2 squared, 
and I1 is going to be power divided by 4 pi d1 squared. So here we're getting it all in terms of distance. Inside that logarithm, I'm going to simplify that. You can see the power and the 4 pi they divide out, and we're left with the logarithm of d1 squared over d2 squared. I'm solving for beta 2, so I'm adding beta 1 to both sides of the equation. And then we can say beta 2 is beta 1 plus 10 times the logarithm of 25 squared over 50 squared. And then we work through that. In the parentheses, it becomes 1 quarter. And when we do that in the calculator, we get 55 minus 6.02 decibels, or about 61 decibels. Now, I've done here in purple another way to go through the math. We could say uh, for d1 squared over d2 squared, we could call that d1 over d2 squared. Rules of logarithms say that if I'm taking the logarithm of something squared, I can take that 2, that squared, and move it out to the side of the logarithm. And so that 2 becomes a times 2. So here I've got a 20 times the logarithm of d1 over d2. So both ways work. There's just two separate ways of working through the math. Question B asks about what if we go to 250 meters? I'm not going to go through the derivation again. You see it at the top of the page. But I'm taking from this line right here in part A. So now we say beta 3 is beta 1 plus 10 times log of d1 squared over d3 squared. And that becomes 25 meters over 250 meters, and that should be squared. So that becomes 55 decibels plus 10 times logarithm of 10 to the negative 2, which is 55 decibels minus 20 decibels, and that should be 35 decibels. Question number 51 on the eardrum. The human eardrum is roughly circular with a diameter of approximately one centimeter. Find the total power impinging on the eardrum when it's subject to 85 decibel sound. All right, so we have the diameter of one centimeter, which is radius of 0.5 centimeters. We're gonna need the radius to figure out the area. And so in MKS units, that's 0.5 times 10 to the negative two meters. Beta is 95 decibels. We want to solve for power. We're going to use the equation intensity is power over the area, which is pi r squared. In order to use this equation, we need to calculate the intensity of an 85 decibel sound. So let's do that. Beta is 10 times log of i over i naught, where i naught is the threshold of hearing, 10 to the negative 12. We're solving for i, so beta over 10 is log i over i naught. Turning this logarithmic equation into an exponential equation, we get 10, because that's a base 10, to the beta over 10 equals i over i naught, which means that i equals i naught times 10 to the beta over 10. Now we're going to plug in i naught, 10 to the negative 12. Beta is 85 decibels, so divide by 10, it's 8.5. And we get 3.162 times 10 to the negative 4 watts per meter squared. Now this derivation here to figure out the intensity given decibels will be used in question number 54. So this bit that I've blocked off in green, will uh, I'll use the same derivation in 54. Now that we know the intensity, power is intensity times pi r squared. That comes from this equation here at the top. So we'll plug those in. We do power times the area, or intensity times the area, and that gives power of 2.58 times 10 to the negative 8 watts, or 24.8 nanowatts. Number 54, what is the intensity of sound with intensity level of 95 decibels? And you can see at the top of the screen, the derivation I did in number 54, and we can compare the answer because in number 54, we found for 85 decibels, 
It's 3.16 times 10 to the negative 4 watts per meter squared. Well, let's do number 54. We're doing 95 decibels. I'm going to use the same equation that intensity is I naught times 10 to the beta over 10. So 10 to the negative 12 times 10 to the 9.5, which is 3.162 times 10 to the negative 3 watts per meter squared. And you notice the difference as we compare this to the answer we got in number 51. Uh, with 85 decibels, it was 3.162 times 10 to the negative 4. And now with 95 decibels, it's 3.162 times 10 to the negative 3 watts per meter squared. So you can see in comparing these two that when the sound level gets raised by 10 decibels, that's equivalent to multiplying intensity by a factor of 10. Number 55 says the band at an outdoor party pumps out sound energy at the rate of 6.5 watts. Neighbors 25 meters away complain about the din. What is the intensity level at the neighbor's place? And to what percent of its original value must the band reduce its power in order to drop the neighbor's sound level by 15 decibels? Assume the sound spreads in all directions, which means we can assume that it is a spherical sound wave. All right, here we have power is 6.5 watts, distance is 25 meters. The intensity is power over 4 pi distance squared. We plug those values in, we get 8.276 times 10 to the negative 4 watts per meter squared. Now, the question is asking what is the intensity level, not the intensity. So now that we know the intensity, we'll plug it into the intensity level equation, as you see here, and we get 89.2 decibels. Now the next part of the question says, what if we want a drop in the intensity level of 15 decibels, which means delta beta is negative 15 decibels? It asks, by what percent of its original value must the band reduce its power? A good way to do this is to set up a ratio, P2 over P1. So uh, there's been a change in power, the final divide by initial, and we'll assess uh, what happens to the power as a percentage. So delta beta is 10 times log of I2 over I1. And remember that intensity is power over 4 pi distance squared. So we'll replace I2 over I1 with the powers over 4 pi to times the distance squared. The 4 pi d squared, they divide out because it's the same distance. And we're left with 10 times the logarithm of p2 over p1. We're going to solve for p2 over p1. So turning this logarithmic equation into an exponential equation, let's first divide by 10. So Delta beta over 10 equals log of P2 over P1. Now we'll turn it into an exponential equation. Since that logarithm is a base 10 that's implied in there, we'll say 10 to the delta beta over 10 equals P2 over P1, which means that P2 over P1 is, as we plug in the drop in decibels, 10 to the negative 15 over 10, we get 0 0.0316. So that means that the power to, it must be 3.16% of the original power. Number 56. At a rock concert, you're 15 meters from the stage where the intensity level is 105 decibels. How far away should you move in order to reduce the intensity level to a slightly more bearable 92 decibels? Here's the given information, D1 equals 15 meters, beta 1 is 105 decibels, D2 is, we don't know, that's what we're solving for, beta 2 is 92 decibels. So we want an equation that deals with sound level and distance, and we're going to solve for D2. Well, the difference in sound level equation, delta beta, is 10 times log of I2 over I1. Once again, we replace the intensities with power over 4 pi distance squared. The power and the 4 pi are constant, so they will divide out. And we're left with delta beta is 10 times log of D1 squared over D2 squared, which you could simplify to be D1 over D2 squared. 
and by rules of logarithms that squared can become a times two of the logarithm. So instead of 10 times, we have 20 times log of d1 over d2. Then solving for uh, ultimately for d2, we're going to divide both sides by 20. Delta beta over 20 is log of d1 over d2. Now we have to get inside that logarithm by once again turning it into an exponential equation. So 10 to the delta beta over 20 is d1 over d2, and we solve for d2 algebraically. In the end, we get d2 is d1 over 10 to the delta beta over 20, plug in those values, and we get 67 meters. Number 67, we're looking at closed tubes and standing waves in them. Find the lengths of organ pipes with one closed end needed to play the following fundamental frequencies. And there are 56 hertz, then 262, then 523, then 1200. Well, for a closed tube, we're looking for just the fundamental frequency and I wrote here C problem number 25 because I, I went through the derivation there. But the fundamental frequency is V over lambda 1, which is V over 4L. And then we just solve for L. So L is V over 4 times the fundamental frequency. And we're just going to plug in those values for the fundamental frequencies. So for 56 hertz, we get 1.53 meters. For 262 hertz, we get 0.327 meters. 523 hertz, I want you to see just musically that the difference between part B and part C, one of them is middle C and the next one is C above middle C. So this is one octave between them. And you can see that the tube is cut in half to go from B to C to get that one octave, that doubling of frequency. And finally, for 1,200 hertz, we plug it into the formula and we get 0 0.071 meters. Number 71 is a Doppler effect problem. It says a runner approaching the start or finish line hears the bell signaling one lap to go. The bell emits a 352 hertz tone and the runner hears it at 359 hertz. How fast is she going? First thing we need to assess is what is moving the observer or the source. Here it's the runner who is moving. The runner, or the we should say the observer, is approaching the source of sound. So we have an approaching observer. We've got the emitted frequency of 352 hertz, the perceived frequency of 359 hertz. We want to know the speed of the observer and the speed of sound. We're going to use 343 meters per second. For an approaching observer, Actually, for a moving observer, we use the formula F prime equals F times 1 plus or minus speed of the observer over speed of sound. If the observer is approaching, that means frequency is going to go up, so we're going to use the plus sign. So we'll use this formula, frequency times 1 plus VO over V. We want to solve for V sub O, so let's just go through the algebra. We'll divide both sides by F. Here we have f prime over f equals 1 plus vo over v. Subtract 1 from both sides. Go through the algebraic manipulation. In the end, we get vo is v times f prime over f minus 1. We plug in those values and we get 6.82 meters per second. Number 75, also a Doppler effect problem. A parachutist leaps from a hovering helicopter and after four seconds of freefall, shouts back toward the helicopter. If the shout is emitted at 425 hertz, what frequency is heard on the helicopter? So we picture what's going on here. The source of the sound, which is the paratrooper, the parachutist, is moving and moving away. So we have a receding source. Emitted frequency is 425 hertz. We want to know what F prime is. In order to do that, we need to know what the speed of the source is. And the fact that the parachutist has been falling for four seconds is going to give us that speed. And once again, the speed of sound, we're going to use 343 meters per second. 
So let's first figure out, after four seconds of freefall, what is the speed of the parachutist? Well, we'll use v equals initial speed plus acceleration times time. This goes back to chapter two. And the initial speed was zero. So acceleration times time, we get 39.2 meters per second. That is the speed of the source of sound. From there, we'll use the equation for a receding source. F prime is F over one plus Vs over V. Since the source is receding, we have a choice in the denominator to use a plus or minus sign. But since the source is moving away, it's going to be the sign that makes the frequency go down. So in the denominator, that's going to be a plus sign. And we plug in those values and we get that the sound is perceived in the helicopter at 381.4 hertz. That is the end of the chapter 11 homework. Have a great day.